Now to Christians, fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies is the biggest proof that Jesus is a true prophet. In many ancient debates between Jews and Christians regarding the prophethood and messiahship of Jesus, the Christians would bring up pro fulfillment of prophecies as a reason for the Jews to accept Jesus. Now in the same way, if Muslims can demonstrate that Muhammad is foretold in the scriptures of the Jews and Christians, then this too would be the biggest proof of his prophethood, and thus Christians should accept him. In fact, this is one of the proofs that the Quran itself lays out in Surah 7.157. I quote the following, Those who followed the apostle, the unlettered prophet, whom they find mentioned in their own scriptures, in the law and the gospel. So the Quran here is claiming that Muhammad is foretold in the previous scriptures. Now the methodology I will be using to establish my case is the very same methodology that Christians themselves use when finding prophecies of Jesus. I often find that Christians use a, concord a concordance approach for prophecies of Jesus but a conflict approach for prophecies of Muhammad. I am confident that if Christians, if they were to apply their own methodology to Muhammad then indeed they would confirm that he is foretold. Let me give you an example of the methodology used by Christians to find the prophecy of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 2, verse number 14, it reads in the following way. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I call my son. So according to the Gospel of Matthew, there's a, pro a prophecy in the Old Testament that Jesus fulfilled, which says, Out of Egypt I have called my son. But when one, when one goes back to the book of Hosea, where the statement is found, one will see that Matthew quoted half the sentence, and when read in full, it reads in the following way, When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. So we see that rather than being a prophecy of Jesus, this verse was in fact speaking about a past event, the Jewish exodus from Egypt, at the time of Moses. Now Christians have two choices, either admit that Matthew ripped the Old Testament out of context, or say that scripture can have apparent meanings, but also be foreshadowing future events. If the, if the Christian chooses the latter option, then he must be consistent when analyzing the case of Muhammad fulfilling prophecies. And I want to start off by saying that if Muhammad is indeed foretold, in the books of the uh, in the Christian scriptures, then Christians should accept him. But if he's not foretold, then we all should not accept Muhammad as a prophet because this is the very criteria that the Quran itself gives. Now, remember what I said in my opening statement that I expect the Christians to be consistent. I think um, Samuel is really, really. Um, put a huge hole in the credibility of Christianity tonight, which I'm going to explain. Remember I said that many Christians have a concordance approach to prophecies of Jesus and a conflict approach for prophecies of Muhammad. First, um, Samuel said that we must read things in context. And remember the example I gave of Hosea chapter 11, where Matthew chopped off the first half of the sentence. Sammy Green, could you tell us whether that was in context, please? When it says, in the original, when Israel was a child, out of Egypt I call my son, talking about the Exodus, when Matthew only mentions this was to fulfill, out of Egypt I call my son, was that in context? I have a book in my bag there called, You Take Jesus, I'll Take God, a book by a Jewish rabbi by the neighbor Samuel Levine, where he blows holes in the, into nearly every prophecy, that Samuel brought up for Jesus. First of all, you said that uh, I've got, uh, I'm, I'm hypocritical in my methodology because I'm applying one methodology for the fulfillment of prophecy for Jesus and another, uh, a critical one when it comes to Muhammad. But as I tried to show you and the examples I gave, they were of explicit ones of the blind seeing, of the deaf hearing, of the lame walking. They're fairly, you know, I'm not, I'm not pushing that example. He particularly brought up Hosea 11, where it says, um, Out of Egypt I called my son. And, and when you read it, it's actually talking about Israel. 
Now, I fully agree with you there. And he said, you know, I'm, 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 uh, Matthew's ripped it off or it's foreshadowing. But there's actually another option. You put forward two options, but there's another one. And that is that Jesus fulfills the destiny of Israel. And this is actually one of the big themes in the prophet Isaiah, that there is, there are, Israel is the servant of God, but they've failed to be the servant that they were supposed to be. And so there is an, another servant, an individual, who is Israel, they're called Israel, and they're going to fulfill Israel's destiny. And so when Matthew is quoting this, he's actually quoting it brilliantly, because what he's showing is that the destiny that national Israel failed in, Jesus fulfills that destiny. And so when you read the beginning of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus' life parallels the life of Israel. He goes down to Egypt. He comes out of Egypt. All of those, uh, he goes into the desert for 40 days, like Israel was in the desert for 40 years. He quotes all the lessons that Israel was meant to learn in it. And so Jesus' life is paralleled to Israel. So that's how I'm quoting it. I'm not, I'm not misrepresenting it at all. I'm actually doing it. And this is why I want to encourage you to read all of the prophets, because if you read all of the prophets, you'll see how they hold together. Then, um, you see, um, remember I mentioned that Christians have a concordance approach to Jesus and a conflict approach to Muhammad. Now, Samuel Green, by essence, has admitted that Matthew chopped half the sentence of Hosea 11, but then Samuel Green gave a beautiful explanation of oh, how it's okay, you know, um, etc. You see the concordance approach, but I gave lines and lines of description of the prophet, his skin color, his hair is black and wavy, the word Arabs in the text, his chief amongst 10,000, his name's there in the Hebrew, balsam is a reference to Makkah, that's not good enough. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 through 15. Pay careful attention to the italic, bold words at the end. And when they departed, here's our story. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Verse 14, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Verse 15, pay careful attention now. Careful attention. And was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Out of Egypt have I called my son. If you had a Christian study Bible, there would be a footnote there. And it would tell you that this passage, in fa fact, can be found in the book of Hosea, chapter 11. This passage, in fact, in the Jewish scriptures. But for some reason, Matthew does something that's striking. He only quotes a very small part of the original passage that appears in Sefer Hosea in the book of Hosea. And the question is why? Ordinarily, if you quote a verse, you quote it in its entirety. Why would you quote only one segment of the original passage? The answer to that question is simple. Matthew, meaning whoever wrote it, had no choice. He had to quote only the last segment of the original passage because had Matthew quoted the passage, the verse from Hosea, from Hosea in its entirety, it would become immediately obvious to the reader of the Christian Bible that this verse in no way is referring to the Messiah, but is referring to something else entirely different. وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاةِ وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدٍ 
فلما جاءهم بالبينات قالوا هذا سحر مبين There is only one God لا إله إلا الله